Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. There is certainly no slowdown in tech news, despite the fact that 2023 is drawing to a close. Of course, early next year, we will see NVIDIA announce the RTX 40 Super Series of cards at CES. And throughout January, they will be launching all three models. Later in the video, we're going to be going through the final configuration of these GPUs, because now even the memory configurations have linked. But I want to start things out with AMD because there are a couple of curious updates actually from Team Radeon. Specifically, this is gonna focus on the 7600 XT. So if you're interested in a budget GPU, this could be of interest. So an earlier leak from the EEC indicated from PowerColor that there would be a 7600 XT, which would be um, featuring either a 10 or a 12 gigabyte configuration. Perhaps it would be launched in a dual configuration. Meanwhile though, later this year, there has been an update thanks to Harakazi5719 on Twitter for spotting this. But uh, as you can see, the filing here is, well, basically from now, essentially, uh, just a couple of days old. And here they're stating that there are two of these cards, both of which, again, the same name, 7600 XT, but this configuration is 16 gigs. Now, I find this quite intriguing because... Um, earlier this year, I think it was May or June, I don't specifically remember um, when I put this info out, but I was basically being told there were a couple of different configurations actually um, for the 7600 XT. Now it does make things a lot more complicated because AMD changed the name of their GPUs a couple of times actually um, during before the launch, but Basically speaking, I was told that one potential configuration was 40 compute units, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. It was based on N32. Remember, N33, the highest configuration possible, of course, would be 32 compute units or 16 workgroup processors and would be up to 180 watts. The second configuration was 32 compute units, again, um, we are looking at 180 watts, but the memory configuration was either t uh, 8 or 16 gigabytes, but it was based on N33. So I reached out to a couple of sources. Unfortunately, because of the Christmas period, a lot of folks are just radio silent. They've gone on vacations, that type of thing. But one source did get back to me. Um, however, because I've only received this information from one source, I would highly encourage you guys to take it with a pinch of salt. In fact, a couple of pinches of salt, because obviously a single source can certainly be wrong. I try to verify things with at least two when possible. But anyway, they've told me that the new information that they've heard is the RX 7600 XT being based on N33. You can see the configuration on screen. 32 compute units running at at least 2.9 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of memory, 128-bit bus, of course, at 20 GBPS, 180 watts, and it will be between 10 to 15% faster than the base card. Of course, that's going to depend on different things like the resolution, ray tracing, etc., etc. Now, it's going to be very interesting because depending on the actual price of this card and that's really what it is right i mean price ultimately is the deciding factor whether something's actually worth buying this could actually be a very intriguing card for folks who are looking at lower end you know gpu solutions so i'm going to be very interested to see what actually this final configuration ends up looking like and when amd are actually going to launch it because as of the time i'm recording this i still don't have the actual release date but now let's move on to nvidia just as a very small aside by the way NVIDIA now have officially confirmed the 4090D graphics card. There's not a huge amount to say about this. It's essentially going to be for Asia, for example, China. I'm sure most of you are aware, of course, that there was that whole, you know, ban situation that happened. Um, so to somewhat circumvent this, NVIDIA basically have released the 4090. So the major difference here is that the number of SMs has basically been cut. So we're looking at 14,592 um, CUDA cores at the maximum configuration. So this also, because there are fewer SMs, from 128 down to 114. This also most likely means that the number of tensor cores has also been cut as well. I've not seen this officially confirmed in NVIDIA's website as of the time I'm recording this. Um, I basically did a little bit of napkin math based upon 
you know, what we know the ratio of tensor coils versus SMs are in the 1490 or other RTX 40 cards, and it seems like it's 456. Um, the clock frequencies are also slightly cut, it seems, but the memory configuration is basically the same. Um, it's probable that we're going to be looking at a small reduction in performance. It's going to be, you know, mid single figures, so five, six, seven percent, something like that. Again, it's going to depend heavily on games. There's not a huge amount to say about this. Again, I'm just briefly mentioning it here for completeness sake. But let's move on to something that is going to be a lot more interesting for the majority of you. I'm going to give full credit to videocars.com because they have actually managed to give us a complete breakdown now of all of the different specifications for all of the different cards. So hopefully this will be the final time that we get to do an update for the 40 series. They are stating that prices are still yet to be confirmed with AIBs. My source is still telling me there's probably going to be a price cut, but frankly speaking, I don't believe anything 100% in pricing until NVIDIA officially announces it because they have a habit of just kind of having like a placeholder pricing um, in their head and then they change it. And this happened with, I think, the RTX 20 series and maybe even the 30 series. I can't remember about the uh, vanilla 40 series, but yeah, there's been a lot of times that Jensen has changed things pretty much the last moment. But anyway, getting back to more important things, the actual specs here. And you can see um, the configuration, for example, of the uh, 4080 Super. Um, there's a nice comparison here from videocast.com. Now, it's quite interesting because, ultimately speaking, there is a small increase, of course, in the number of CUDA cores from 9728 to 10,240. But the memory configuration... Of course, it's still the same 256-bit bus. It's a bit of a shame they didn't use AD102 and then use something like a, I don't know, like a 320-bit bus, something like that. But I have to say I'm not surprised NVIDIA didn't do that, to be honest. But anyway, the major difference here, of course, is that the memory speed has basically been cranked up to 23 GPPS. So it's going to be very interesting to see how much left... Uh, how much is left, excuse me, in the tank for overclocking. Um, I suspect it's probably not exactly going to be, like, going to the stratosphere. You know, let's just face it, you're not going to be getting, like, 27 GPPS memory speeds. Um, but, with that said, of course, this will mean that some applications are just going to be much more bandwidth constrained. Um, moving to the 4070 Ti Super, I don't have these cards to test, so I don't know. But I would not be surprised if this ends up being a very popular card, depending on the pricing. Um, the memory speeds are identical, so 21 GBPS. However, the bandwidth has been significantly increased because, of course, the bus width here has seen a massive increase from 192 to 256 bit. And again, that does mean, of course, that the memory size has also been raised significantly as well. Um, the number of CUDA cores, as we've spoken about several times at this point, has risen significantly. We're looking, I'm going to round up and down these figures for everyone's sanity, but we're looking at around 800 CUDA cores more. So, of course, that does mean a significant uptick in performance. Ultimately, whether it's worth it over the vanilla 70 Ti, or whether you're better to purchase like a cheap 4080, of course, it will depend on pricing. But I would not be surprised... Um, anecdotally whether these are very popular GPUs and as for the 4070 Super yeah uh, it's really close to the 4070 Ti it obviously dwarfed the performance of the vanilla 4070 um, not least of which because the number of CUDA cores has risen significantly but the bandwidth has uh, remained the same now this one I find actually perhaps most intriguing of all uh, in terms of the memory configuration, because I actually, I didn't know the specs, but I kind of figured that they'd raise the speed to like 22 or something like that, GBPS, but no, according to this, it's identical. Now, whether there's room left in the tank for overclocking and how much, of course, it's going to depend probably on the AIB and what modules they decide to stick on it, that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how much um, of a bandwidth kind of bottleneck that actually leads to. Um, then again, if we look at that compared to the 4070 Ti, 
Of course, you could see that the memory configuration is pretty similar, so you could probably make some level of prediction. It's going to be quite interesting, though, to see how all of this ends up in terms of the marketplace. Again, it's really going to be down to the pricing situation, I think. Um, but yeah, one of those launches, I think, that we kind of know everything about these cards at this point. And uh, I'm going to be very interested to see actually how the market responds to this. And most importantly, when I say the market, I mean, well, AMD and see what type of uh, strategy they have. With that said, guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.